All right, well, a Police Integrity Commission hearing has begun in Sydney into an intelligence sharing agreement between officers and the Catholic Church over sexual abuse allegations. Documents obtained by the ABC show the New South Wales Police Force was warned twice by its own lawyer that the Memorandum of Understanding was illegal. An overarching question is whether it was open to officers of the New South Wales Police Force to determine that certain classes of case would not be investigated actively by the New South Wales Police Force and that information in relation to those cases would not be provided by the Catholic Church to the New South Wales Police Force. Notwithstanding that such information may well have tended to suggest that serious criminal conduct had taken place and may well have been relevant to the investigation or prosecution of such crimes. David Shoebridge is a New South Wales Greens MP and a barrister and the justice spokesman for the party. He accessed the original documents under freedom of information laws which confirm the existence of a draft agreement between the police force and the church. He joins us now. From Canberra, uh, David, if we could talk about this MOU between the Catholic Church and the police. It was a, a draft, yet it seems like it was operational. How does something that was a draft and not signed end up being operational? Well, the fact was there was an exchange between the police and the church, and indeed on, on one version of the documents it appears clear that the police initially drafted this MOU, and then it was operated as though it was in force for the better part of six years. And... And in fact, it's not until 2003, and this is six years after it's drafted, when the Catholic Church writes to the police and says, look, we just want to confirm it's still on foot, we're still operating on this basis, that eventually the police say, well, actually, uh, it's only a draft and it's not currently in place. But uh, on any view of it, we had this arrangement where the church was giving edited information about some of the most serious sexual crimes against children. Giving that edited information to the police, the police knew about it, and did nothing. Okay, let's talk more about that edited information, the way you put it. Uh, the Police Integrity Commission heard today that the MOU allowed the, the Catholic Church to withhold information in these so-called blind reports. How did that work? Well, it works whereby the, the police took on trust when the church said to the police, well, the victims come to us, uh, a victim of serious sexual abuse, but they've told us, the church, that they don't want the police to investigate. They just want it to be dealt with on an internal church basis. And, on, and, and because of that, we're not going to give you the name of the victim. And also, the church wouldn't then give uh, other crucial information, such as the outcome of the internal church inquiry or any admissions that were made by a priest. Now, how on earth could the New South Wales police take, on, take at face value a statement from the church that a victim of abuse of a priest of the church didn't want to go to the police? But yet, we have that in black and white in the arrangement uh, between the church and the police under these memorandums of understanding. And we did hear in the Commission today that one of these so-called blind reports referred to Dennis McAlinden, one of the most notorious pedophiles in uh, New South Wales history who was abusing across four decades, according to the inquiry, in Newcastle last year. Yeah, a, a, an appallingly um, notorious pedophile who, who, who operated for at least four decades that, that it's been known. And if, if, the, if the police had had the information about the name of the victim well, then they would have been able to use that as further corroborative evidence to bring up a successful prosecution uh, against Father McAlinden. And what is really remarkable is, I referred all these documents to the Canine Inquiry, which was looking exactly at Father McAlinden in the Hunter Valley. And I was told by the Canine Inquiry that they wouldn't look into these memorandums of understanding because McAlinden's name wasn't raised in them. Yet we hear quite a contrary matter from the Police Integrity Commission today. David, the inquiries are also looking at the role a police officer played, a police officer played sitting on the, um, an internal church board. What, uh, what can you tell us about that and what the inquiry will be looking into as far as that's concerned? Well, we now know that from 1999 till 2005, a, a, a senior child protection officer from the New South Wales Police was sitting on an internal church body called the Professional Standards Resource Group. And, and that body was reviewing the way the church was handling complaints about sexual abuse. And, of course, that was the body that was ticking off on the blind reporting to the New South Wales Police. And, and what is absolutely remarkable was when we sought all the documents that the police had about the operation of, of this uh, internal church body, we were told that the police didn't keep most of the documents because the officer either returned all the evidence to the church or, if she retained any evidence that she shredded them following the meeting. So we have the New South Wales Police either giving back or shredding the evidence of serious crimes against children. And how that came to be for six years is, 
is, is an extraordinary state of events, which the Police Integrity Commission, I hope, will get to the bottom of in these hearings. John, do you want to respond? Well, I'm not really responding, just making the obvious point, I suppose, that uh, you would have thought this chain of events was referring to uh, something that was occurring in the 1950s or 60s, not something occurring so recently. And it just underlines the value of the Royal Commission um, in the sense that the only... The, the, the resolution of these matters is transparency and accountability and both the police force and the church need to be transparent and accountable for these actions, not only the, the actual crimes of pedophilia but the subsequent cover-ups and the subsequent behaviours both by the police and the church. David, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks for coming on tonight. Pleasure, Steve.